This is a quick demo of the batch context plugin being used to generate small scripts and then execute that small script on several data files from the EEG Lab graphical user interface um, on the local computer. Basically, this example is going to load a uh, raw data file, then read in the coordinate file, and then save the combined EEG data set to a new file. Um, renaming it. So first I'm just going to go and load import BDF file. I'm going to import this um, participant 01 file right here. I'm just going to use the defaults. and the default again. So now this is loaded as an EEG data set. What I want to do is I want to go to the channel locations and I'll cancel this and then read locations. Now this um, participant has their own coordinate file this PO1.SFP. So I'm going to double click on that. Auto detect is fine and OK. Now this file has the channel coordinates loaded in. I'm going to save this as a new file. So I'm going to go to save the current data set as. And I will call this the same as the input file. I see TRN PO1 And then instead of the rest of these underscore o underscore one dot bdf, I'm just going to call this underscore init dot set. Okay. So what's happened now is I loaded the initial bdf file po1, then I read in its coordinate file from po1.sfp, and now I've saved it as ictrn. PO1 init.set and FDT. So what I want to do is now execute what I just performed on the rest of these initial data files. So that is build a script that will do exactly what I just did to this first file and then execute it on the rest of them automatically. So to do that using the batch context plugin, I'll go to file, batch, I'm going to save a history of pen history template batching file HTB. I'm going to call this the ICTRN init.htb file and that created this file right here. Now what I can do is I can load that file in a text editor and it basically copied the history field from the EEG structure but replaced certain parts of it. For example in the initial loading file where there was a path it replaced that path with something called the square bracket batch underscore DFP square bracket backslash and then the square bracket batch underscore DFN square bracket. What this is going to do is whenever I choose to execute this script on multiple files, these sort of key strings are going to get swapped in with the files that I choose from a list in a browser. Now, at the end of the file, whenever it is saved, we see that it found that the same name was used again, except it was changed. So, what this notation means is that it's going to it found the same file as the input except at a specific underscore that is the second one from the end instead of writing what it wrote before it's going to replace it with this so in this case I read in ictrn po1 underscore o underscore one dot bdf if I go back two underscores here and then here, 
and instead replace this trailing part with what is here, I get the output file. Now, by saving this script file, it didn't recognize that it also has to change this name whenever it runs on, on the next few files. But we can change that manually. So we can replicate this name by putting in a square bracket, saying underscore, and then moving up two underscores. So in this name, it's going to go to the first one to the second one, and then it's going to start at PO1. This is now batch DFN. And then it will do the same thing as below, move back to underscores from the end of the file and then replace the end of the file with .sfp. So this annotation allows you to um, rename files and then find associated files based on any parameters in the initial file name that you use to load the data. So I'm just going to save this as the IC train init dot htb. Go back to my MATLAB command line and I clear the data set and study. Go back to my batch and then run history template batch. A large um, interface opens up that has options for the way that jobs will execute. But in this simple case, we really just want to run a history file. So I'll choose the history file, the one that we just wrote. And then we want to execute this script on multiple data files. So I'll choose 2, 3, 4, 9, and 10, the rest of the raw BDF files that we have there. I hit OK. So it's now going to perform this script. And whenever it swaps in names, it's going to use these names and hit OK. So what happens is it builds a time-stamped folder and creates an M file of the script that we wrote in the HTB file, but then swapping in the names where the batch DFNs exist. And then as it executes them one after another sequentially, it creates a log file that holds the commands, basically the diary of the command, of the command line in MATLAB. And so there it's created the last one. It's loaded it. Okay. And here we can see that in the timestamp folder, an M file was created for PO2. And if we load this up, we can see that it went to the right directory and then loaded this file, found the SFP file for that specific subject, and then named the output file this. And then if we check the log for that, this is basically what was printed to the command line during the execution of this one file. So the procedure for scripting with the batch context plugin is is that and then the number of functions that you execute and then save to your history and then even add from a text editor uh, can just be extended and then using the the annotation for the batch DFN for swapping the names can just be continued.